Hello and welcome back to another video, specifically to a video that I never thought I would make. I'm doing this purely because I had a request to do so, not out of my own desire, um, but I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't preemptively make uh, assumptions about how I'm going to feel about this, but I'm going to react to the first episode of Discovery Season 5 because there's been a bit of a Star Trek drought recently. We're, we're waiting on future seasons of Star Trek, uh, and this channel was built on Star Trek. So I, I do want to get some more Star Trek content going. Uh, but again, this, this was purely, purely brought up because of a request to do this. Let me lay my cards on the table, all right? I have not seen Discovery's seasons, seasons three or four. I think like many people, I jumped ship after season two because um, I was totally only invested in that for Pike and the Enterprise crew which in them alone was not really enough to make that season particularly good for me. I still think it was riddled with a lot of stupidity. Uh, so I was totally out after season two, but thankfully it gave us the brilliant show that is Strange New Worlds. So it's not, uh, it's not, let's not I'm not going to ridicule it entirely, um, but I've never been a fan of Discovery. I tried, I watched it when it first came out. I was watching it, you know, as season one was airing and I just was not gelling with it. But... I've heard good things about this first episode of season five. I know the first two episodes aired simultaneously, but this video I think will just be the first uh, first episode. And I'm not I'm not going to guarantee that I'm going to watch the whole season. If I really love this episode, if for some reason it really pulls me in, then of course. Um, but I'm going to try to, unless something happens where I just can't be bothered anymore, or it really loses me. Um, but I'm going to try to get through it, and maybe Discovery will end on a high because I know it's really been tough for some people to get into it, myself included, but I would try to go into this with, and not consider my uh, my negativity that I already have associated with, with Discovery, put that to the side, and just enjoy this, uh, this season for what it is. So without further ado, let's get into the premiere episode of Star Trek Discovery Season 5. Last season on Star Trek Discovery. Okay, so we're getting a recap good because I don't know any of the new characters. I don't know anything. I know they're in the 32nd century. That's it. I know about the burn. I know the burn, like all the warp engines or the dilithium in the entire galaxy went inert or something. I don't know what the resolution to that was, but I know a little bit about it. I have long told myself that balancing duty and personal relationships was not possible. I believe now that I was being dishonest with myself. It is worth the effort. This lady, I believe, I believe that Romulus and Vulcan got back together, right? They reunited, and I think she's like the president. I did, I kind, I think I, I did try to get into season three a little bit when it came out, but it and just it wasn't happening. Okay, starting off with the action scene, pretty uh, kind of G.J. Abrams-esque. <laughs> I guess, is this like a, this is like a different substitute for the warp drive, I guess, if warp was no longer possible? Tonic 2161, it's the official cocktail of the Millennium Celebration. Ooh. Oh, a thousand years since the founding of the Federation, yeah, 2161, yeah, that's, so that's, that's no way we didn't see that. I'm thinking of the Coalition of Planets, which just preceded the Federation, right? That's where we saw the end of Enterprise and Archer helping uh, start. Boy, the Federation signal is looking pretty sad now with just three three planets. Luminary? What am I supposed to do? Walk around, shake hands, and pretend I'm happy that the Pathway Drive went up? Yes. Pathway Drive. So that's the new means of interstellar travel then? It's a new world, Paul, and you will find new purpose. 
We all will. I really like Burnham's dress uniform. Though. That's really slick looking. Um, I have to go, but I'll see y'all. Hmm. So are we mingling, or are we going back? I don't know who this other character is here with Stamets and uh, Hugh. So I guess she would be from the future time. I guess she's a Discovery crew member, though. President Rillick would like me to serve as a Federation ambassador. I would be assigned to a coalition of smaller worlds. So Saru and this uh, Vulcan lady are, have a thing? Interesting. I don't know how that uh, romance came about, but uh, I approve. I approve. Saru is easily one of the best characters of the show, for the first few seasons at least, so... I'm all into uh, exploring his character more. I would need to resign my Starfleet commission. I would be based here at Federation headquarters, since your duties often bring you here as well. I should not factor into your decision, sir. Oh, come on. He's obviously you're the biggest factor in his decision. Lady, I don't know what your name is yet. <laughs> I keep wanting to say Navar, but that's her that's her planet. I know that's that's the, the reunited Vulcans and Romulans. Secure location? We call it the Infinity Room. A bit theatrical for my taste, but some like that sort of thing. Yeah, yes, I knew David Cronenberg is in the show, uh, but I don't know anything about his character, but it is funny that he's in it. And then quirky, bizarre, but I kind of like it. This is a red director. I'll get my crew. The spore drive system is on standby. Dots are in the loading bay if needed. Target location scans are complete. I've got another Starfleet vessel in the sector. I'm sorry, but those uniforms are just so ugly. I like that they're colorful. Kind of like TOS-ish, but it doesn't really matter because it's in the 32nd century, but... And then, like, they should be colorful, but, like, the sets of Discovery were designed for uniforms that were very sort of subtle and muted, with just, like, solid colors. And so that the fact that they have these popping colors now, it's really... It doesn't work at all with the bridge and the aesthetic of Discovery, I don't think. Maybe it works with the aesthetic for the newer ship, like 32nd century ships. I haven't seen any of those yet. There's an item on board that we cannot allow to fall into the wrong hands. Scavengers in the area monitor comms and probe signals. They will most certainly be drawn to this. So they're uh, racing uh, to find an 800-year-old Romulan ship with some sort of thing on it that they, they want. I don't know what Red Directive means. I've never heard that term before. I guess it just means Alpha 1, Priority 1. It's the real deal. Important. That is a... That's a very bizarre... I guess that's like a CGI mixed with prosthetic effect. What the hell kind of alien is he? He kind of looks like the Klingons from the first season of this show. Whoops. That's it. This is where all the backup power is going. Whatever Starfleet doesn't want us to have, it's in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's like the Romulan... That's a TNG Romulan ship. But not like the the, the, the Derodex, obviously. It's... Is that the one they had in uh, the last phase, right? I think. It's like a smaller scout ship sort of thing. Reese, Awoshakun, with me. We'll keep phasers on stun. That might not be sufficient. Sir, lethal force is only authorized. Captain, I don't care who's over there or what happens to them. <laughs> Cronenberg is such a weird, bizarre presence to everything he's in. And the fact that he's wearing glasses, I mean, yeah, I'm one to talk. But in the 32nd century, I mean, that's <laughs> so bizarre. <laughs> I, don't, I guess he's... He's some sort of higher up in Starfleet. I don't think he's. He said he was. He said Doctor Kovich, the Admiral Admiral Vance, who we saw before. He said the name's Doctor Kovich. I don't know what. I'll, I'll fill myself in after watching this. Probably should have done that beforehand, but I'll do a little uh, digging for myself. I've always kind of liked the Discovery tile sequence, though. And it's still it's still using the same theme. It's Chef Russo, so it's going to be a good theme no matter what. But it's different for Star Trek, and but I think it kind of works. 
one of the few things I actually really liked in the season season one. <laughs> The instant transporters are kind of fun. It's, it's always kind of a tricky thing. Like, how do you show advancement in transport technology? You know, because there's already, like... That's something that's so... That should be the most advanced thing in Star Trek. Just the idea of that. So I guess, yeah, just make it faster. <laughs> this, I, I don't know if this really looks like a... Like a TNG Romulan era ship. It looks pretty Discovery-ish. Maybe they did try to replicate it? I don't think they did, though. Which means they're still here. Captain, I can't move! Neither can I! Right back. <laughs> what the hell? They've just been frozen in place? It's like they've been stuck in honey. That's neat. The phaser turns into a rifle. That's pretty cool. It's so dark. It's so hard to tell what's going on. Just, just modern filmmaking, I guess. That's the thing. What is that thing? It's like some sort of a weird artifact. That was actually sick. That was really freaking cool. That was so cool. Very, very neat. A little, like, poor little grenade. Oh, what the sh... The magnetization of the suit is strong enough to handle them starting, like, jumping to warp and she doesn't go flying off. That's, that's insane. Right, okay, so this is this is what we started off with, the opening scene. This is not what I expected when the night started! This is not how I thought today was going to go. This is not how I thought this day was going to go. This is Captain Rayner of the USS Atari. I see you started without me. <laughs> well, we some okay, so we're finally seeing a 32nd century ship. No, finally. I'm finally seeing one. I know they have those detached nacelles, which I don't really like. Um, I've seen, like, the Voyager J. Is it Voyager J? I know that that was in Season 3, I think. But yeah, I don't... The detached... I don't think they, we've seen a 32nd century Enterprise. If we have, I, I gotta look that up. But yeah, I don't like that new aesthetic. Take us in as close as you can. Aye, Mr. Saru. Lieutenant Gallo, prepare to beam the captain to safety the moment she is free of the war bubble. Aye, Mr. Saru. Hang on. So much action. It's really like movie-level action in the first 20 minutes. It's pretty nuts. That's what you get with 10-episode uh, seasons. You can do a lot more ambitious things <laughs> and big budgets. Get out, get safe, I've got this. No, no, you don't. You made this personal. Every mission's personal. It's called doing my job. This Captain Rainer sounds like a pretty cool dude. I, I don't know if he... I guess, I guess he's a character that they already know. Right. Yeah, she, she seems to be She seems to be talking to him like she knows him. How is she still... How did she not get thrown out of the warp bubble there? That's just so weird. She should have been obliterated there. I, I don't know about that. <laughs> Give me a break. They're, they're, they're being too fancy and showy here, for my taste. It's, it's, it's not a sci-fi action film. It's Star Trek. Come on. I get it's a season opener, but this is too much. That cherry that they just dropped on our shit Sunday left us with 20 warp signatures all charting different courses. Shit Sunday. A cherry on a shit Sunday. Man, the writers of Star Trek now love using cursing. And I, I mean, I curse all the time, but I really hate when Star Trek characters curse. They shouldn't curse.
So this is book, right? Missions come aboard. Captain. Obviously, they were had a fling. I'm gathering. He's the one with the cat, right? I hear you're doing really good work. Look, working with refugees, rebuilding after the DLM. I go where the Federation tells me. Today they sit here. Whatever it takes to make things right. I have to say, it seems like they've really worked out Michael's character a lot more because she was just not a good character in the first two seasons. You know, she's pretty much single-handedly started the Klingon War when mutinying against uh, Michelle Yeoh. Just a, not a good character. So uh, it seems like they've rounded her out a bit. Any idea what was inside? No. Dr. Kovic. Any context would only help our mission. I'm not at liberty to share details. So there's something in a Romulan puzzle box. Is it is it the uh, phase shifting technology? My mission or hers? Why don't you try working together? What species is this guy? He's got really unique looking ears. But he acts kind of like a human, but obviously he's not. I love the way Saru walks. Doug Jones just did such a good job uh, in, the, in uh, inhabiting this character. I'll miss you if you take that diplomatic post. President Relic spoke with you. She'd be lucky to have you. He's definitely going to take it. Come on, this is the final season. They, they're they're going to wrap things up. Everything's Everybody's going to go off on their own, their own little missions, their own directions, tied up very ne neatly. Exactly. That's exactly it. It's like what it means to be a crew. I can't crash all these kids onto an ice moon in order to teach them that, right? Could I? No. So obviously Tilly's no longer a cadet, but uh, I guess she's like part of Starfleet recruitment training cadets. She was one of the best characters. Well, one of the most enjoyable characters. I wouldn't necessarily say she was, say she was one of the strongest characters, but she was a very entertaining presence in the first two seasons. And she was a lot of fun as the uh, Mirror Universe captain. This is a good... Is, I didn't even pay attention to the credits, but is Jeff Russo doing the score? It's very good and cinematic. Just like uh, Picard Season 3. Had a great score, too. Stranger Worlds has okay, has okay music. Right, so it's Tatooine we're on. Look, those even look, look like moisture evaporators there. I love the feeling of interrupting something. You two need a moment? Not at all. We're good. This guy's going to be fun, I can already tell. Don't recognize the actor, but I'm already digging his vibe. Welcome. How effervescent to meet new clients. Pardon my friends Whoa. here as they remove any weaponry from your possession. That's quite... that's it. He's an android. It's like a data. I get, yeah, surely android. Surely they would have cracked data's uh, the mystery of data by the thirty-second century, right? They would have. They wouldn't just be suing androids, but he looks like a suing android. Interesting. Spicy. How can we make an excellent deal today, Maul and Locke? <laughs> the idea of a of an android like like Data being a like a black market dealer. <laughs> this thing. Intriguing.
All right, what is this thing? Show me. Oh, a book. Maybe it's that the Roman scientist's journal. That thing was in the title sequence. Must be important. These items will not be returned. You may now exit this premises. No, that's not how we do business. Mm, you don't want to fight it. An android like him. They're tough as hell. You're gonna have a hard time beating him up. <laughs> okay, maybe he's not so great in combat as I was as I was expecting. Doesn't know how to even use a phaser. Oh, never mind. He blasted her. Dang. Locke just decked Fred, was that his name? They're never easy, that easy to kill, come on. Android's supposed to be stronger than that. I'm thinking let's go. Can we go? Fred is dead. They may know something that could help us, so can you beam him up and have the team scan his memory and find out if he has family here? We should notify them. Right away, Captain. That fast transporter is just so jarring compared to, like, TOS. It takes, like, a minute to, t to transport somebody. <laughs> Drive serial number AS zero five seven two Y AS Alton Soon. Hmm. Well, he was based on Doctor Soon's design, so whoever built yeah, but okay, but Alton Soon died in season one or no, sometime after season two of Picard, right? So that's twenty twenty four hundred. So he must have been Fred here must have been built before then, right? Unless it was just the serial number is just used AS. Well, there weren't any Sungs after him, right? As far as we know, the last Sung android was the new data. They're on sand runners, bearing 28 degrees north of our landing site. We rent the three of them. Let's go. Sand runners? Just call them speeders. <laughs> That's what they are. Another action sequence coming up. Lieutenant Sylvia Tilly, step away from the console. What, you, this console? Or? You're attempting to break into a secure Federation database in violation of security protocol 6 South. I'll take it from here, officers. She was breaking into a Federation archive. <laughs> Thought nobody would notice. What the fuck? Give me a break. But I do think that she deserves to know what's so important about an 800-year-old Romulan ship that they're all risking their lives for it. I agree. Yeah, but Vance doesn't know either. Only uh, Dr. Kovic knows, and I guess really higher ups in the in Starfleet. This is Dr. Velik. I am oh. a victim to all mine. That's the classic Romulan, TNG Romulan with the horrible shoulder pads and everything. <laughs> Love it. In the shadow of twin moons, full scope. My oh wow, well that's very convenient that he just cuts out exactly the exact details that you need to hear. I hid them on in the system. <laughs> this gun's cool. This gun's really cool. But the 32nd Century Federation or Starfleet phases are ugly as hell. This is so bombastic. Good lord. There's an explosive charge at the entrance. It's armed. 
Ah, so they planned ahead in case we follow them. Clever. Ha! If I didn't hate these guys, I might like them. That was a really <laughs> fucking stupid line. Uh. Better idea is to blow it from here. Block the entrance. We take away their escape room. Oh, that's actually a good idea. Yeah, you... Oh, there's people there. Never mind. Otherwise, I'm totally on Rainer's side. Blow the... Blow their exit. Seal the tunnel. A good shot! Come on! Booker, you were a courier. You know how this goes. Back me up here. The further I am from this, the better. This is so... This is a weird... That was very weird to do that like that. <laughs> very out of character. Confirmed that the mountainside remains stable. Seventy percent for the win. <laughs> that was that was such a cringy line. Seventy percent for the win. Whoa. Avalanche! Turn around. Oh dang! There's no way they're gonna be able to get away from that. What I understand is so yeah, they can lose their bikes in the tunnels, but. If they leave atmosphere, they're going to be detected by the two ships, the Antares and the Discovery, no matter what, right? I mean, what would prevent that from happening? Discovery, we have to stop that avalanche! What's your status? Stop an avalanche? You don't stop an avalanche. Just let it run its course. Or a force we around the sediment. That could work. Even with all available power going to shields, Discovery couldn't do it alone. Uh, what about with the Antares? Well, both ships would need to arrive simultaneously, but that could work, I think. What do you mean have to arrive simultaneously? Why? Just just hover the two ships in front of the village with their shields on full. And they can block the avalanche from, from wrecking the village, right? That's kind of a cool sight. <laughs> That's pretty sick. I'll give you their exact coordinates. On my mark. No! That's uh, They have to do everything last second. It's so it's so intense. Why do they have to crash? Why didn't they just float in front of them? Like, float above and levitate above the, above the surface. Above the surface. Why do they have to nosedive into the surface of the planet? That's fucking stupid. I'm a school visual, but... Makes absolutely no sense. That should have wrecked those two ships. And there go Molly. They went to warp from the planet's surface? Isn't that something you're not you can't do? Ah, oh, I really should have called. So it was you. You are the one who shut him out, Michael. Come on. I don't know what caused a rift between them, if somebody else came between them. Or maybe just their careers. But uh they seem to be a pretty good match. No, uh, no bad feelings, I guess. On the bright side. That's neat with the sand, but you're telling me they just spore drived off the planet's surface to back to Federation headquarters? <laughs> that's that's just crazy. Come on. I appreciate you. <laughs> Everybody just popping in and out. It's so weird. I'll I'll never get used to that. It's so it's too jarringly different. But I guess it does make sense in the context of the show. But it's so weird. In my youth, I struggled often with love. How to embrace those who were destined to be taken from me in the cullings. His backstory was so fucked, man, with the, uh, 
Ba'ul? Those, like, weird black slimy creatures that were, like, turning them into a... That were once the slave class and became the the dominant class. And that was creepy as hell. Then the Red Angel showed up and that whole horrible story arc happened. <laughs> but everything with Saru in his past. He's, he's easily one of the most interesting characters of this show. At least he used to be. I am going to accept President Willock's offer. I want to be with you. That's sweet. But I thought he was going to be maybe pick, choosing to leave later on. Maybe he just won't leave Discovery until the end of the show. Codify our mutual commitment in a more official capacity. Is she proposing to him? Are you asking me to marry you? I believe that is the language some cultures use for it. Oh, God, she's so good. She's like the perfect Vulcan. This is great. This is already like my favorite thing in this season is Saru and Trina. Let me, I'm guessing it's T apostrophe R I N A. <laughs> nice. So they've got the diary. So they didn't even need to be chasing Lady and Locke. I can't remember the lady's name. Locke is the, is the guy, though, the alien. So just let them go. They don't care about what's in the book. They just care about selling it. What the hell is this? Dr. Kovic. What the fuck is this? Some weird holodeck? Romulan's name was Dr. Velik. He was present when a Starfleet captain, Jean-Luc Picard, found a message left by a race of ancient... Oh, f this is the whole... This is the... Oh, what the hell is the episode called? The Hunt or something? Yeah, the Progenitors. And they were like... They seeded every planet, right? With, and, and these human Progenitors, they seeded every planet with their DNA and created life. That's... What the hell is that TNG episode called? It's not The Hunt. Something like that. That was a great episode. Somehow, Dr. Valak found their technology. Whatever it was they used to design life itself. The question is, was that the same actor that played Valak in uh, TNG as he was in the hologram there? <laughs> that would have been wicked wild. <laughs> I'm sure it wasn't. We have to find it before they do. In the long hands, I... I I can only imagine how a technology this powerful might be used. It's the technology that the progenitors used to design life. And th this Romulan discovered it. How? I guess it's some... Was there more clues on that planet that were, were they had all chased? Chased? Is that the episode of The Chase? How could he have possibly found out more? It's not like they left more another another treasure hunt behind them. I guess maybe they could have, but it was just like the end of the episode was just like, "Hey, congratulations! We're the ones who who made you goodbye." <laughs> it wasn't like, "But we have more to teach you." I don't, know, I don't know. That's a cool tie-in, though. I'll give them that for sure. All right, well, that was the first episode of Discovery Season 5. Uh, right out the gate, I enjoyed that a lot more than I expected to. I will admit that. Uh, but there was way too much action. It was over the top. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not expecting an action movie from Star Trek. I'm expecting what we got at the end, which was this, the idea of finding the technology that is responsible for life as we know it. That was a really cool thing. I didn't expect a time with TNG. Uh, we saw Jean-Luc Picard, and we were, we were chasing the journal of a character that appeared briefly in TNG, which is very cool, and uh, that's a very interesting mystery. I don't know what... I, they're looking for a certain technology that created life. 
I don't know what the hell that's going to take the form of, what that's going to, what the payoff for that's going to be, what it's going to end up looking like in the end. But I'm interested. Um, I will definitely continue watching this. I, I enjoyed it. Um, all the characters, at least the ones that were focused on, um, have clearly been just made so much better in the two seasons that I unfortunately didn't watch. Um, but they're so much more interesting and they're more like people uh, and actual characters and not just rigid shells of, of characters that I feel like they definitely were in seasons one and two. Um, particularly Burnham, who is smiling and is personable and is has a relationship with this guy, Book, who's also cool. She's a much more pleasant screen presence now. Um, and I like Sonequa Martin-Green. I, I thought she was great in Walking Dead. The only actually, actually, that's the only thing I've seen her in other than this. Um, but I just hated her character in the first two seasons. Now I like her a lot more already, just after one episode. I really like this Rainer guy. <laughs> He's really cool. The captain of the Antares. Uh, I don't know what species he is. Uh... But he's cool looking, and I really like his personality. His no nonsense, you know, do whatever means necessary to get his shit done. That's cool. Um, and my favorite character, who is easily Saru, uh, is getting married. It seems uh, to the Trina, the Vulcan lady, uh, which is great. And but he's leaving the Discovery for a job at Federation headquarters, which will probably not happen until the end of the season. I notice maybe the season will end with their wedding. That'd be a nice little capper. Hopefully nobody dies or she doesn't die or anything. That would really suck. Um, because I love Saru, and I, I'm, I'm interested to see where his, uh, his story goes. And all the other characters, the, the, the um, Discovery standards like uh, Stamets and Tilly. Stamets, I've never thought was an interesting character. I've always thought he's very dull, um, but he got some fun lines in this, and uh, I've always liked uh, Hugh. His, I guess they're married, right? So his uh, husband. I like him a lot. Um, but yeah, but a lot of the bridge crew got nothing to really do. They're just, you know, saying techno babble. I did, honestly, I don't even know I know Detmer or Woshikin, and I don't remember anybody else on the bridge. Reese, I think, is one of them. But they were so bland in seasons one and two. But uh, like, if if the uh, the main characters, if the main characters are anything to go by, they are exploring characters this season, or they have been at least, and they continue, they will continue to in this season in a more interesting way. So, for that, I'm, I'm interested for sure. And uh, I think this was a very strong episode. Uh, this alone got me more interested in Discovery than I've been in years, five years you know, since season two came out. So that alone is a pretty impressive feat. I actually am very, very happy with how much I enjoyed this. But let me know what you thought. I think I did read uh, some little, little bit of the discourse online when this first came out that it was very pretty positive. The people were a little bit concerned that, that I guess the last two seasons off also started off pretty well and then kind of tanked pretty quick. Um, hopefully it doesn't happen with this season. Hopefully they put all their eggs in, in one basket for this and they really try to create an interesting story. And that the culmination for this TNG tie-in story is actually something interesting and cool. I really hope so. I hope that it doesn't fall flat on its face. But like I said, I'm definitely intrigued. So let me know what you thought of this episode. Did you watch uh, the other seasons of Discovery? I figured most people who are watching this probably did, and I'm pretty unique in my case, and I probably should have watched them before this. But like I said, it this is purely because I wanted to... Uh, Get some more Star Trek on the channel and fulfill uh, a request. So, let me know what you think. Uh, if you know, discuss this episode, uh, and feel free to spoil seasons three and four as much as you want because I'm not going to be watching them probably in the comment section. And fill me in as much as you can on the important character details. But I got a little bit of a, yeah, a recap in the beginning of this episode that I guess probably told me all I really need to know. That's usually what they do. Um, so, but I'll, I'll probably do a little bit re more research on the side. But like I said, feel free to fill me in. And as always, leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video.